Hello and welcome back and today we want to talk about the brand new QSW M408 4C switch. That's right, quite a mouthful, but today I want to talk about their new affordable multi 10 GBE enabled switch and a managed switch I would say. Now this switch is available now from the guys at Span for around £350 and it's probably the most affordable 10G switch I've seen yet. It's their brand new series of devices follow up to last year's unmanaged 10GBE selection of switches and today we're going to do a software overview of the graphical user interface and how you can interact with this new 1GBE and 10GBE combo switch. Now it's worth mentioning straight off the bat that there are several versions of this switch out there. As you can see on screen from QNAP's own page, this is the combination copper and fiber switch. It's listed, uh, I would say, as a 12 port switch, mainly because you've got the eight 1GBE ports with a config port there on the bottom, and then you've got these combo ports. And because this is a managed switch, it does open the door to other functionality which we'll go through later in the video. But it's worth highlighting that all of these 10GBE ports do support 5GBE and 2.5GBE, as well as, of course, 1GBE as well. Now, we are connected via a 1GBE port, but it's worth highlighting that just for the sake of this test, I have connected two different connections at once, a 1GBE and 10GBE. When you do set up the device for the first time, there's no software install, there's no um, immediate hassle setting up for the first time, you can utilize this device from day one and never have to interact with the software if you so choose and use it in a comparable unmanaged capacity. But it's when you go into the software known as QNAP Switch System or QSS that you'll be able to configure this device to your own preset home or business environment. So what you need to do to find the switch on your environment, on your local area network, is to use that QFinder application. Now, this is a tool that we would normally utilize for NAS. It would uh, find a NAS on the local area network and allow you to access that NAS and QTS um, via your web browser on the local area network. But of course, you can set up remote access to this device if you so choose. Now, as you can see here, this is the 169 connection there, connected into the switch, and we're going directly into that switch. I've already set up a couple of connections, as I mentioned. We have got a 10 GBE connection using an adapter, and if we go there, there's our switch there, connected in via 10 GBE. We have the 1 GBE connection as well over here, and we're connected on both of them. And again, you can configure these connections, change jumbo packets, and a lot of configuration on your side. But the thing that we're really looking at in today's video is the software overview of the QSW M408 itself. Um, as you can probably tell from the sound, I'm not recording in my usual area. Um, I'm in a completely different location surrounded by new equipment where I'm going to be for the next few videos. So I will try to clean this sound up for you guys, but I apologize if there's a tiny bit of an echo. So when you set up the device for the first time it will ask you to use the mac address for security so the device itself will have a mac address there on the end this is your password without the dashes the first time you set the device up for the first time but of course as soon as you do that it will invite you to change that password for the first time and in fact before we go any further one thing i do want to highlight while we go into the graphical user interface of this switch is the lack of noise all the time that I've been talking here, the switch itself is about a foot away. And right now, that switch has got the internal mechanism and everything running. And I'm going to move the mic closer to the switch for you guys to give you some idea how quiet this switch is. Now, I'm assuming in the post edit, that was particularly quiet. I can tell you right now that it I can barely hear the switch next to me, given that there is a NAS not a short distance away that I can hear louder. But nevertheless, let's push on forward. As you see here, this is the overview of your switch. It's telling you the traffic happening right now live, and as well as the connected traffic per port and the overall. That's 10 GBE and standard 1 GBE combined together in an overview. You can look at each of the individual ports and it will highlight which ports are being utilized at any given time. If we go along, we can then switch to the port management tab. Now, for those of you that followed my QNAP Guardian video from late last year, a lot of the settings in today's video will be familiar, but there has been updates. Now, as you see here, there's lots of mention here of different ports. 
you can start combining ports. You can do different configurations such as link aggregation and port limitations and speed limitations if you so choose. Now these can be set to automatically switch in terms of priorities or manually switch to make sure that certain connected devices always have priority speed on the network. As you see, each of those pairs there of the 10 GPEs are comboed together. So you can, in theory, link aggregate across copper and fiber. In fact, you can pick up fiber to copper um, adapters that can be heavily utilized if you are making the switch from a fiber to copper environment or vice versa, depending on the distance you're covering with your 10 GBE network. I am utilizing OBS for this video, so there may be the occasional pinch of lag, for which I apologize. Now, Options such as flow control or settings guide allow you to change lots of information. It even tells you a newbie to the world of networking a lot of the settings and options available to you on the initial setup of this device. You can change different options from this drop down at the top and as well as look at historical and analytical data based on your device and how it's been used over a given period of time. That's the difference in many ways between a managed and unmanaged switch. Most people think the main difference is simply that of link aggregation, but there is more to it than that. Historical data and statistical data and analytical data of your network can make all the difference to improving things later on with regards to the average workflow of a photo video editor or VMs in your local area environment and over the internet. Now, virtual LANs are of use to a number of you out there that like to create subgroups within your network to host different users. So rather than have one giant network here, you can create a separate um, virtual network where some machines can communicate whereas an overseer device can see everything you can ensure that different connected networks and even if you connect a switch to a switch you can ensure that those degrees of separation can be there for data security and simply for confidentiality link aggregation as mentioned gives you the ability to combine ports so in the case of this 10 gbe connection it allows you to combine individual 10 gbe ports and open the door to 20 gbe and higher and as long as you've got the same number of ports on your nas or if you're using a network interface card on a pc or mac system it will allow you to improve those speeds and as long as your nas has the right number of drives and the right raid and the right media allow you to edit files directly over the network live from here, you've got lots of other security credentials and protection from DDoS attacks, as well as failover for if one of your ports falls over. So if you're a business that has multiple network connections and multiple internet connections to make sure that you remain connected, if one of those connections gets weaker or is completely down, there's lots of options here that you're going to find both appealing and incredibly useful. And then you've got remote access as well as remote overview combined into the whole system. There's lots of options that the more technical minded will probably take advantage of, but still nevertheless, it's nice to have that level of configuration that you would expect from a top tier management switch. Now, in terms of security, it's worth highlighting that although this device doesn't protect you um, from general internet level access on your NAS if there's more than one connection, the system itself will serve as a fantastic gateway device allowing you to present um, a barrier between the outside world and your switch. And as long as you can do that, you do limit the majority of um, intrusions on your device. But of course, the end client devices are always going to be as susceptible as anything else. So as good as this switch is, always make sure that your antivirus, anti-malware and anti-ransomware protection is as high as it can possibly be on all of your client devices. This device will serve as an, a near impenetrable gateway if you choose to the outside world. But don't think that means you have to overlook the security internally as well. Now, there's lots of options moving forward with regards to um, Windows access control and quality of service options that allow you to assign that priority that we talked about earlier on. And again, this will depend on your own localized network and if you're going to take advantage of um, link aggregation or port trunking, but it's going to be quite nice to be able to combine a number of those ports for your editors who they can you know, reinvent their workflow editing photos and video over the network and then at the same time allow those 1GB connections to either be maxed out when connected to a single 10G NAS across all eight of those ports or allow that to be for your metadata, your distribution. Ultimately, what happens over the content creators do their thing. 
Now, the settings of the device can be changed on the fly, but of course, you can set up a lot of security credentials as you would a QNAT NAS. There's lots of options open to you in the background, as well as restoration, and you can set the device up to be quite safe and quite bespoke to your own system environment. You can, of course, change the IP as you'd expect from any switch, but this is going to be the main means with which you interact with the device rather than dedicating to each of the individual ports. For that, you need to go to the port management section. And then finally, we've got the firmware update. And this allows you to search for a firmware update out there if you're connected to the internet, which I'm not for this video, and allow you to update the firmware regularly. This can be done live or scheduled on the device itself. But this has been QSS on a brand new M408 switch. It is a complete managed switch solution and with no compromise in mind. It's going to be interesting to see how this deals with link aggregation. And I look forward to showing you guys a 20 GBE link aggregation video taking advantage of a brand new QNAP NAS, the 877. Um, not the 877, sorry, the 872, uh, as soon as possible. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you want to learn more about this device, do check out my hardware review. We'll be going into a lot more detail below at NAS Compares. And of course, visit the guys at Span.com who know their way around NAS networking and all things data storage. And they'll be able to help you out. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you next time.